since many of us are working from home these days, I've been sharing some tools and workflows that make that process more efficient, more effective. And uh, what I'd like to talk to you about now is uh, sharing model views, particularly with clients. And two major uh, features that I want to touch on are uh, web views and animations. So a uh, small project here that we recently did, a historic stone one-room building that was uh, added on to, and we're doing some modifications to turn it into a small event center. And I wanted to share this with a client so that they could see the model. A great option here is a web view. And what that does is it uh, generates an animation or an object that's posted on a website that somebody can view with a web browser without any additional software. And uh, it's pretty straightforward exporting that. You would just go File, Export, and uh, choose Web View. You've got some options here. The quality can be low, medium, or high, or very high. You can go ahead and include ambient occlusion. That gives uh, a little bit of shading in uh, the corners of your geometry to make it look a bit more realistic. Draw edges or not. Have full color or white model. Include a clip cube if that's already in your view. All your visible objects are just the selected objects. You can get a shareable link and you can save that web view either and a temporary cloud storage or Vectorworks or Dropbox or your local storage. And you can even choose your own logo instead of the default Vectorworks logo. I tend to find that with any but the most simple models, um, medium to high is about as high as you want to go. Very high, you tend to get so many polygons that it might be difficult for people to view that on certain devices. When your client views a web view, they're going to do that from a browser. You'll send them a link. They'll open the, the link. And the browser navigation will allow them to either essentially um, walk around the outside of the model or walk through the model. And the navigation is different on a uh, flat screen device like a tablet or a smartphone than it is on a desktop. With the tablet or smartphone, they get to move the tablet around in order to navigate. So they're actually using the accelerometer built into the device for their navigation. Whereas with the desktop view, then they need to use their mouse to click and drag and so forth. I've had some clients report that they have difficulty in navigating the web view. Some people take to it very easily and for others it's a more difficult. Uh, but again, it's the same link that you're sending to everyone, whether they're going to view it on a computer or some sort of a device. And you may want to experiment and uh, see what settings work best for you. Something to think about with the web view is that it's interactive. That is to say the client or the viewer gets to decide what they're looking at, and that's great. But they can theoretically go anywhere into the model. So if you're showing an interim design that isn't completely finished, not fully baked, there might be some parts of the model that you're not ready to share because you haven't worked them out yet. The web view is going to allow the user to see everything. So keep that in mind. Another option that is a little bit easier to use, sort of foolproof, but not quite as compelling is to do an animation. And I, I do these quite a bit, especially when I'm explaining building to a potential contractor, for example, or showing it to a client for the first time. And a good version of that is an orbital animation. So I've already created one here, but I'll show you how that works. So I'll activate this camera view. And if I just hit play over here, you can see that it rotates about the building. And when you export that as a QuickTime movie, then that's just something that somebody can view. And they can play it faster or slower, but that's about it. So if they want to go inside, they can't. 
And of course, there are path animation options that allow you to create a guided path into the model. But again, it's the path that you choose and they only see what you want them to see. More work for you up front on a path animation, more control of the views. But it's just QuickTime movie, so it's just a, a movie file that they can view on any number of platforms and it's very, very simple. And the way you would create an orbital animation like that in Vectorworks 2020, I'll just go to a top plan view here and back up. What I tend to do is uh, actually, let me go ahead and go to a perspective here. Right. So what I like to do is choose the objects that are going to form the center of my animation. And a really good candidate is a roof. Uh, here I've selected multiple individual roofs and roof faces that cover this model. And I like to choose roofs because they're easy to click on because they're exposed. And most of the building lies under the roof. And so if you choose that composite roof geometry as the center of your rotation, you're going to be able to capture everything in the animation. And so then uh, having done that, I'll just go to uh, Model and create a walkthrough path orbit. And I can choose the rotation angle. In other words, it doesn't have to be a full 360 degrees. And here I'm choosing the center of selection, and I'll hit OK. And you'll see that it creates this object over here. Let me go to top plan view and back up a little bit. So this object that Vectorworks has just created is the path animation. And uh, the camera is over here at 12 o'clock. And it has a variety of points along the path. So this is actually the same kind of path object that you would create if you were doing a walkthrough path animation. It's just a circle. Uh, a couple of tricks with this. One is that if you want to start from a point of view that isn't 12 o'clock here or north, uh, an easy way to do that is just to rotate the circle of the path itself. Either you can do rotate left or right, or in this case, I'm going to rotate some angle, and I'll be going clockwise, so that's uh, minus 30 degrees, right? So the starting point here is this triangle, which represents the view of my camera. So if I go to activate the camera view, you can see that's centered on the roofs, not just in plan, but also in the Z direction. So that's a bit high for my view. So what I'll do is with the path animation selected, I'll just move it 3D and I'll just move it down, uh, I don't know, pick five feet, for example, and then go ahead and deselect and then reactivate the camera view. So there's that new view. I can hit play here to sort of preview what that's going to look like. That looks good. And then I can go ahead when I'm ready Go ahead and create the movie from down here. Choose how long it is. Five seconds doesn't sound like very long, but that's, you know, five, eight, ten seconds is generally plenty of time to view a movie. 24 frames per second is a good kind of mix of quality and not tremendous file sizes. And here I'm just doing an OpenGL rendering. Here are all the settings. It's just taken the settings from the view that I'm in and copied them over. And I can either process it on a local computer or the Vectorworks cloud. And I like to use a standard size of 1280 by 720 pixels. There are some other standardized sizes that you can choose. And I can do custom proportions or screen. And then I'll go ahead and save the movie. Here it is, I'll save it to my desktop. And you're getting a little preview window here as it's saving the movie. 
And then I'll go ahead and uh, place that file somewhere on a cloud, Drive, Google Drive, Dropbox, Vectorworks Cloud, whatever. And then when that's uploaded, I'll go ahead and send the link to my colleague or client or consultant, whatever the case may be, and then they can view that movie in their web browser or whatever device they happen to use. It's very simple, very straightforward, easy way to share. So again, in, in summary, two of the many options that I have are to create a web view, which gives me a drivable model that I can view on a number of web browsing platforms. Uh, the downside to that is the navigation can be a little tricky sometimes for some users, and they get to see everything. Uh, the benefit is um, it's a more interactive experience for them. And then uh, this orbit animation, more foolproof, more limited, but a great way to quickly share the idea of your project with someone. Hope that's been helpful as you're working from home and finding ways to do that efficiently and effectively. Be well.